I want to say right from the outset, my, um, my presentation is not going to be as entertaining or as sweary as AJ's, but uh, it is going to be 20 minutes long. <laughs> um, so obviously, now, obviously you, all you guys are here, you know, you want to be developers, that's what you, you envisage yourself doing. So I, I'm kind of, I come in from a different point of view, basically my company, um, we work for independent game developers, um, not only in the UK, across the world. Um, and basically they come to us and they want to promote their game. One of the points I will come to is now in the realities, commercial realities of, of being a game developer and releasing a game is it's not just about we finish the game, we release it, people will discover it. The hardest problem for developers now is discoverability, is how to get your game noticed with all the other games that are being released. Especially now, you know, digital is such the, the dominant format, you know, be it Steam, be it um, PSN, XBLA, iOS, you know, the App Store, Google Play. There are so many games out there, there are so many avenues for developers to release games. The discoverability is the real, real sort of issue for um, a lot of developers. Uh, so it's basically where I come in, where um, my company comes in. So a lot of this stuff is probably not going to be relevant for you guys, maybe for a few years. But it's certainly worth bearing in mind from a, a development perspective, because a lot of this you really do have to kind of factor in um, once, you're, once you're developing, because PR takes time, and we'll, we'll go through it. But um, just give you uh, this thing to work. <laughs> okay. Ah, there we go. Right. So, just a quick, quick bit about me. Um, so, yeah, I've been in the video games industry since 1996. A lot of you guys probably weren't even born in 1996. Um, so, yeah, sort of held senior PR positions at EA, Infograms, Atari, who are now Namco, Bandai. Um, so, just some of the franchises I sort of worked on from a PR perspective, Need Speed, Bond, Warhammer, etc, etc. Um, some of the big developers that we've worked for um, throughout my 20 years, so Epic Games, Bioware for Axis, to name but a few. Um, so yeah, I formed Johnny Adam in 2005, a lot of smaller developers now that we kind of work with, we pretty much that's our area. We've kind of gone away from the big sort of like AAA um, box product because it's, it's so corporate and because there's very little flexibility in terms of what you can do. So from a PR point of view, even though the budgets were a lot smaller, working with a lot smaller indie developers is actually a lot more fun, creatively a lot more rewarding and you actually kind of get a lot more input uh, with the games and the developers themselves. So just a quick overview of just some of the um, studios that we've worked for over the past sort of 10 years. Some of them you may know, some of them you may not know, but it's just really an illustration of kind of that's where our focus is and these are the um, sort of indie studios that we're sort of now developing for, um, we're now PRing for. So, like I said, a lot of this is probably not going to be relevant for you guys for a few years, but it's definitely worth taking it into consideration and realising the realities of when you're making a game, this is stuff that you absolutely have to take into consideration. So, a PR plan. So what is a PR plan? So this is your starting point. This, kind of, this is going to be the most important sort of document that you put together. It's essentially your battle plan, your strategy from start to finish in terms of, right, how am I going to PR my game? How am I going to get it out there? How am I going to get it noticed? It's all about promoting the positive aspects of your game, what your game does differently from anybody else's game. So it's all about identifying those key elements, how you're going to communicate that. It's your Bible, essentially. So what areas do you need to consider when constructing your PR plan? So it should be broken down into the following sections. So game description, <coughs> PR positioning, what the key features are, who your target audience is, what the overall aims of your PR plan is, specific objectives, activities, what activities are you going to do to PR it, who your target media is, what territories are you going to promote your game in, 
and your um, schedule of activities. Um, I'm going to, obviously, because I've only got 20 minutes, I'm going to rush through it pretty quickly. Um, I'm more than willing to sort of, if anybody wants a copy of this, uh, the PowerPoint, I can provide that to you. What I'll do, I'm, I'm going to leave some cards here. It's going to have my email address and my mobile number on it. If you guys kind of sort of want to email me afterwards and say, actually, could I get this? Not a problem. So if I skip a bit too quickly and you, you're desperately trying to scramble down notes, don't worry about it. Okay, so first area, your game description. So what's your game about? So essentially, you've got to summarise your game in two to three paragraphs. The sort of example I always use is just say, you know, you've been developing a game and you're somewhere where there's a games journalist from, you know, Rock, Paper, Shotgun, whoever, you're a gamer, and you introduce yourself and you're a game developer and they go, oh, okay, what, what are you working on? Now, if you haven't thought about it, so, well, it's, well it's, it's, it's this game and it does this and it's kind of like this and it does this, and, oh, yeah, and there's this bit where you do that, they're going to kind of switch off pretty quickly. So if you can kind of concisely summarise your game in a two to three paragraphs for the purposes of this PR plan, if you, anytime you bump into anybody that perhaps is interested in your, your game, a journalist, you've got this two, three paragraph or two, three sentence soundbite where you can just go, bam, you can kind of go through it, describe it in a few minutes, five minutes, right then and there, they completely understand what your game is about. So this is going to what you... All external messaging, be it verbal, be it on email, be it sort of when you're presenting to, you know, finances or, or um, publishers or, or whoever. So I'll give you an example. This is from a game that we worked on a few years ago called Burn Zombie Burn from a um, studio in Guildford called Double Six. So three paragraphs. First paragraph, this is basically concisely, as tightly as you can, general overview of what the game is about. So, name of the character, here to kill zombies, pretty much, you can pretty much guess the type of game that it is. So, second paragraph, this is where you kind of elaborate, this is where you kind of expand, this has got all the key information, what platform it is, when it's coming out, what type of game it is, um, a bit more sort of information about the game, describing it in a bit more detail. And then the last sentence is your summary. That's it. That's your entire game description broken down into three paragraphs. So get in the habit of any game that you're working on, do this. So your PR positioning. So this is basically if you need to kind of summarise it even in, you know, condense it even more. If you basically you need to summarise it really quickly to somebody who's just on the way out of the room or on an email or you know, just in your own head, just to kind of constantly remind yourself, what is this game? Again, if you had to sell it in one, one sentence. So this is, again, burns over burn. So take down never-ending hordes of brain-munching zombies to rack up that high score using your wits, reflexes, and lots of cool zombie liquefying weaponry in the year's funniest, bloodiest, and most addictive shoot 'em up So that's three paragraphs condensed into three lines. So, key features. So these are the most important features of your game. These are the elements that are going to sell your game. This is what your game does differently to any other game. Or it's got some, you know, it kind of flips things, it twists things compared to what other games do. This is what makes your game stand out. These are the elements that the media are going to be interested in, the potential consumers are going to be interested in, that are going to make them think, hang on a second, I, perhaps I've not played a game like this before. So, just an example from an MMO that we worked on a few years ago. Um, so, again, top one, Heritage, what they worked on before, character classes, really um, interesting professions for gamers to learn. Not, no other kind of MMO did what they did. Um, so turn-based battles. Political feature was really interesting. There was a lot of sort of political factions in the game, which was kind of really interesting. Ecological feature, again, that, that was really interesting. So actually in the game, there was a live active ecosystem. So if you went around sort of killing one particular animal, 
for argument's sake, and that animal became extinct, it'd become extinct in the entire world and it would never come back. The same with trees, and the same if you wanted to grow trees, you could do that, and you could overrun this world with these trees. So it was, it was really, really interesting, and, and, and it would affect the ecosystem depending on what you did, positive or negatively, it affected the ecosystem of the entire world. So again, that was kind of a point that we pulled out that we thought, actually, no other game does that. That's going to be really interesting. Journalists are going to be really interested in that. So again, it was just pulling stuff out that would make it stand out from all the other MMOs that are out there. Okay, target audience. Um, so who's your game aimed at? Who will enjoy playing my game? So again, answering these questions will really help you identify you know, how to target your promotional campaign, which media you should go at. So typical audience groups would be families, casual gamers, Fans of a specific genre, puzzle game shooters, RPGs, etc. Kids, hardcore gamers, females. Again, identify who your game is aimed at. So what are your overall aims? So what's the overall aim of the PR campaign? What are you looking to ultimately achieve with it? Critical acclaim, you want those awards, you want those BAFTAs. Long-term consistent sales. Short-term high sales, you just want to get it out there. Big punchy, number one game, bam. Building a franchise, is, are you, you know, are you kind of, do you see sort of sequels down the, down the road? Building a fan base, you're going to kind of build that hardcore sort of loyal audience. Developing characters or a game universe that you can maybe sort of expand on that with other games, different types of genres, all set in the same world, same, using the same characters. Again, summarise this in one to two paragraphs to give your plan its focus. So again, this is kind of, I'll give you an example I'm not going to go through it, but just, just use this as an example just to kind of, so you can see the sort of thing that goes in there. Again, quite happy to sort of provide this um, PowerPoint so you can kind of go through it in a bit more depth at your own leisure. So your specific objectives. So what are the objectives of your ca uh, PR campaign? What is your messaging? What are you trying to communicate? Is it about the technology? Unique or interesting gameplay? Characters, your game universe, great artwork, great design, unique or interesting game interface. You're kind of producing a game where people are going to kind of inter interact with it in a really unusual way. Content support, all the stuff that you're going to support the game with for you know, months after the game is released. Again, break down your objectives, short bullet pointed paragraphs, concluding summary of what your goals are. So again, this is just an example. I won't dwell on it because um, this is just an example. It's not really the, uh, the core information. So activities. What types of activities will be most effective in promoting my game? Again, this will be driven by a variety of factors, the answers that you come up with. The type of game that it is, how much time you have available before release, more time equals more activities. How big your budget is, don't worry, you can do a lot with a very, very limited budget. Um, how, ma how many visual assets you've got available, how much time you're willing to commit to promote your game. Oh, don't know why that's done that. How strong your verbal and written communication skills are. Again, it's all about sometimes being able to communicate verbally just in a room when you don't have the game in front of you. Communicate effectively so people get an, an idea of what your game is about. So the examples of activities, media preview days, interviews, exclusives with specific media, launch day activity when your game comes out, doing something around that, social campaign using social media, exclusive studio visit, kind of getting journalists to come and see you in your actual studio, uh, video walkthroughs, kind of like a, almost like a, a, developer, um, a director's commentary on a DVD, but you're just doing a video walkthrough of your game to show key sort of aspects of it. Promotional teasers, sort of putting together little things that you pop out in the post. It's got like a little URL on it or a little character from your game, just as a reminder. Competitions and giveaways, press releases and media alerts. Developer diaries, podcasts, digital teasers, reviews. You can see there's loads of things that you can do. Target media are almost there. Come on. All right, so what type of media should you focus your PR campaign on? Specialist gaming media for hardcore gamers, 
lifestyle mainstream press for casual gamers, children's media to reach kids, special interest media relevant to your game, so whether you're you know, doing a, a railway game or a driving game, target those specific media. Um, is it format specific? Mobile, for example. Not all specialist gaming sites cover mobile. Are there specific journalists that love this type of game? If so, make them a priority. Um, so some games are not relevant to um, some games are not relevant to all media and their audience. So obviously, know who you're targeting. No point if you're doing a My Little Pony game, taking it to Eurogamer. They're not going to be interested. It's a scattergun approach. So it's kind of do your research, know who's going to be interested in what, and then target that media. Almost there, territories. Which territories are you looking to PR your game? UK only? Europe? US? Europe and US? As many territories across the world as possible? Again, determine this from the outset of development. More territories, more potential consumers. More territories your game is released in, more PR work for you guys. This is the last one, activity schedule. So how far in advance should I start PR in my game? One week, one month, three months, six months. Again, more time equals more activity, more media coverage, more consumer awareness. Some games need more time than others. If you're doing a big RPG, you're going to need a lot of time. If you're doing a small match three game, not so much. Once the amount of time has been established, put together your activity schedule, broken down by week or month. This will enable you to plan your assets, what assets you're going to need, also going to um, effectively tr keep track of your time, how much time you need to commute. Uh, you need to commit every week to, to PR activities. So, so it's a working plan as well to keep you guys on track. So this is kind of one we put together. So you can see sort of down the uh, left-hand side, you've got the activities, basically all the activities we're going to do. The assets that are required from the developer saying, right, we're going to do this this week. This is what we need from you. And then that's broken down. This one was broken down by month in terms of what activity was going to hit, hit when. But you can do it by week if you need to. And last, this is absolutely the last slide. So the key do's and don'ts of good PR. Okay. Punctuation and grammar on all external communications are perfect. Make sure. Journalists hate receiving poorly written press releases. So written English is really, really, really important. Make sure you factor the PR campaign into your development schedule. Making the game is only 50% of the job. The other 50% is selling it. Like I said at the top, discoverability is the biggest problem that all developers and publishers to a certain extent without a massive multi-million dollar um, marketing budget, this is the problem that they face, is how to get your game discovered. So if you guys kind of want to do the PR yourselves, which absolutely you can do, make sure you factor it into your overall development schedule because it is time consuming. So don't overlook the importance of visual assets, especially trailers. Without them, it's almost impossible to PR a game. It's all about, you know, I've been asked many a time from developers, what's the most important thing about PR in a game? And I say assets, assets, assets. And that is the absolute truth. The more high quality assets that you've got, visual assets, the, 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 you know, the stronger your PR campaign will be. So again, factor that into your development schedule and budget. Don't just focus on the big specialist gaming media outlets and ignore the smaller ones. Don't just focus on Eurogamer, Rock, Paper, Shotgun, those guys. Treat everyone equally and everyone with respect, all the small blogs, because you know, they, might, you know, they might kind of have an affinity with your game, they might champion it, you know, and then you never know when they're going to be tomorrow. They might end up at working at Eurogamer or GameSpot on IGN, and they're going to remember that you paid them the attention and that you kind of built up that relationship with them. And wherever they go, they're still going to remember you, and that's going to pay dividends further down the road. So again, just treat everybody equally. Be organised. Be proactive rather than reactive when it comes to PR. Have a strategy. Know in advance what your PR strategy is. Formulate an effective plan and implement it as opposed to doing everything ad hoc. One will produce good results, the other not so much. And that is it. Thank you very much, Simon. <laughs>